Hey guys, uh, Beatlifter here. Um, before I get started, I apologize ahead of time for the background noise that's kind of going on. Um, I'm in the studio at my school, and uh, there's a band in the live room, which is right next to me being recorded. So it's kind of bleeding through into my studio. Um, so I apologize for the background noise. Just try to, you know, block it out. Um, reason I'm posting this tutorial is just to talk to you guys about a little bit of mixing and mastering because I was just you know scrolling through Fruity Loop tutorials and uh, you know I noticed there's a lot that uh, you know tell you to put a soft clipper on or a fruity limiter on or sound goodizer to improve your song or keep it from clipping um, so uh, that's not necessarily the right way to do it um, sound goodizer I find I used to use it sometimes and in some cases it can be good but in most cases it's not good and you don't want to put it on your master track because you don't want everything sound goodized because then it's just gonna sound really messy and it may sound good to some people but it's there's way better ways of doing this so as you can see i do have a fruity limiter on but that's only for mastering purposes that's not for mixing or ensuring that i don't clip what well, kind of is ensuring that i don't clip but that's all for mastering you don't want to do that before your track is done or as you're making your track um, i'm gonna try and make this quick i have done this twice already doing this tutorial but i kept exceeding my time limit which is 15 minutes so if I go a little fast, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys pointers uh, so you guys aren't boosting all your volumes and then putting a limiter on because um, that's the wrong way to do it. And if you're doing that, you, yeah, it's just your music's never going to, you know, reach its best quality. Um, so here i'm just i'll play you a short clip of my song here without all my mastering stuff on so as you can see it's only hitting about negative eight and most people be like oh that's way too quiet but yes it is quiet but not when you've mastered it um and i apologize for the clicks and pops uh i'm running off my laptop sound card and it's not very good so and it can't really handle much um, so and I'm not at home so I've got my little interface over there which you know prevents all that crap so uh, yeah so ignore the clicks and pops um, but yeah I have to be running off my computer sound card in order for you guys to hear me and to hear the audio in this video <clears throat> okay um, anyways uh, so for mixing as you can see if you look at my mixer here all my levels are really low like nothing is cranked all the way up or boosted so you can see I have panning going on um, so yeah uh, you want your volumes low first of all so all your instruments aren't fighting for the headroom so think of your master volume as a funnel. So down here, the funnel's really wide, but then as it goes up, it thins out and thins out. And so if you have all your volumes boosted to, you know, up here, and they're all smacking zero, they're all fighting for the little headspace that you're leaving them. Therefore, all your frequencies are going to be battling each other. It's going to sound really messy and cluttered and muddy and just noisy. And if you're throwing a sound goodizer on your entire mix, that like what a sound goodizer is doing is it's just boosting your frequencies um, in different ways. So that's just, and if you're doing that to everything, uh, it's just everything is going to have the same type of boost on it, and it's just not going to sound good. It's not going to sound right. Typically, you want everything EQ'd a little differently everything mixed a little differently so your instruments aren't fighting for the same spot in the song um, and for monitoring if you don't have like studio monitors or you don't have you know 
good speakers to play your song back on or play your stuff back on like don't sweat it like if you can like and it's just like and what i do and what i've been learning is um to use every type of monitoring you can so i have my laptop my laptop has tiny shitty speakers so what i do is i mix on them so you mix on your tiny speakers and if you can make it sound really good and big on your tiny speakers what do you think it's going to sound like on big studio monitors or you can export your song play it on your phone or your ipod and if you can make it sound good on a tiny iphone speaker what do you think it's going to sound like on big studio monitors or big you know speakers at a show or in a car with a great sound system like it's going to sound amazing so um and if you guys are mixing or listening to your song in at loud volumes for a long time uh after about an hour or so of you know you blasting your ears away your ears are going to start getting fatigued and it will so then your ears will start kind of compressing themselves trying to block out some frequencies and uh basically your ears are going to be lying to you after a point certain point so don't mix on too loud of volumes for too long Cause yeah, cause then you'll, you might start making wrong decisions and then you'll, let's say, do something, you'll think your song sounds awesome, then you'll export it and then you'll come back the next day after your ears are rested and you'll listen to it and you'll be like, it didn't sound like that last night. So just keep that in mind too. Um, so basically you want to mix down all your volumes, make sure everything sounds clear, you can hear everything clearly. Um, like listen to the busiest points of your song over and over again and make sure everything you can hear everything um and just mix it how you want it to like like don't boost all your volumes like look at like look how low my lead is my lead is at 15 percent volume which is only you know it's at negative 27 26 yeah negative 27 decibels but it sounds huge because, first of all, it's on the send here, and there's tons of effects on it, and plus it sounds huge after I put my mastering stuff on there. So, so there's that, and then once I turn my mastering stuff on... sounds way bigger and better um, I apologize for the clicks and pops like I said shitty sound card um, but yeah just try to mix down don't put your sound goodizer sound goodizer whatever it doesn't necessarily make your song sound good just because it's called sound goodizer um, EQing is a big part and if you're EQing stuff hold on, let's see how much time okay, we're at eight minutes still good uh, if you're EQing stuff like generally like let's say you want some more mid-range to pop out on your clap or something uh do i have any q in here yeah see i have boosted some stuff but and i've taken out low end um so you want your clap to stand out a bit more so you boost it a little bit but don't boost it a lot because software eqs they're not the greatest for boosting frequencies but they're good for taking away frequencies so if you want your high end to stand out a bit more, take out some low end. And then that will allow for more higher frequencies to, you know, pass because then it won't be fighting with the low end. Um, yeah, and if you want more low end, don't boost your low end like this or like this because then it's just, it's going to sound terrible. Like take out some high end or play around, like bring this down and go back and forth like this until you know you believe it sounds good but like yeah and also panning is a big thing too like instruments will fight each other in a song for a spot it's like musical chairs there you've got all these frequencies running around in a circle and then once that spot opens up they all fight for it right so that's kind of a shitty whatever 
anyways, <laughs> uh, but you get the idea. Um, so as you can see, my snare is panned to the right, clap is panned to the left. Um, I didn't do that just because I want my clap on the left. Like, it's not like it sounds bad, but it's not like I did that because that was my plan in the first place. My plan was to have everything centered. Um, but, and also, this sounds ridiculous, but it does work. Um, mix, like, pan your stuff in mono. Like, you're not going to hear your panning in mono because obviously it won't be going left to right because you're not in stereo. But if you're in mono and you're panning, uh, once you get to a certain spot, like if you're panning around, like let's say I'm panning in mono right now, and I still can't hear my snare that much, I still can't hear my snare that much, but there, I can hear it, it's more noticeable there. But I'm still in mono, but I can hear my snare better all of a sudden. So that means that that's kind of a spot that's open. So here it sounds most open on the right, I found. Um, so that's why that's there. And I didn't pan it too much to the right, because if you're playing live, like let's say, um, and like the way raves or something are set up, or, you know, concerts, speakers, you're facing them, right? And then there's a big crowd on the floor, and clearly um, the crowd on the left is listening to more of what's happening on the left speakers, and the crowd on the right is listening to more of what's happening on... The right speakers so if you have like your clap panned all the way to the right or something um, the crowd on the right as your song is playing isn't going to really hear that clap so typically like for instruments like this like your hits and your crashes and your rides snares whatever kicks you all generally want in the center and then what I like to do, like you don't have to do this, this is just my doing. Um, what I like to do with my leads is I always make two, so they're playing on two tracks, I layer them up, and then I pan them left and right. And then that way they're hitting more on the outside, and they're leaving room in the middle, because they're not playing as heavily on the two center ones. So the way I look at it is it's kind of like my kick is in the middle, so if I want my kick to be more noticeable, it's my kick's hitting in the middle while my lead is hitting on the sides. That way everything has room to, you know, play. And uh, another technique that I did for this song to hear my kicks a little more is that I put some ghost kicks in, as you can see. These are my ghost kicks. You can't hear them. And they're triggering my limiter in here for a side chain. And what the side chain does is when this kick hits, it's compressing the lead a tiny bit, like at the same time as this kick hits, therefore letting the kick be a tiny bit more noticeable. Just a little strategy that I tried out and it worked. So it's a good one for you to try out, see if it works for you guys. Um, so yeah, uh, mix everything down, don't throw limiters and fucking compressors on your master while you're making your song. That's for after everything is done. After your mix is done, after you feel it's ready to be mastered. And then like leave a lot of headroom, like mix everything down to the point where it's like, you know, maybe negative three D decibels or lower. And how much time we got? Okay, I got a minute. So yeah, mix everything down because my song hits around negative eight, you know, around this general area. And that's pretty quiet, but yeah, as you can see. Sounds way bigger. Um, sorry, I'm talking loud. <laughs> But yeah, I hope this helped you guys, um, and for you people putting those tutorials out there of, like, throw a limiter on and a sound goodizer to make everything sound better, don't do that. Like, stop putting those tutorials out. I know you're new and you're just trying to help, and, but that's not the way to do it. So, I hope this helps you guys, and for you guys that are, you know, doing what I'm telling you not to do, I hope this helps you as well. Just a little more techniques, I could go longer and get more in depth but yeah i only got 20 seconds on the clock so i hope this helped you guys uh let me know what you think and let me know if this helped you all right i'm out of here guys thanks peace